Hello, everyone. I'm Kwani Lunas here, joined by Chris Forsberg of NBC Sports Boston and the Celtics. They're going to head into game three on Friday. Chris, what is your initial reaction to what you think will happen on Friday? Ooh, uh, so I hate to say, Kwani, I haven't been particularly optimistic about this series. And I kind of wish the, the, the attendance is going to go up on Sunday, up to 17,226. And I think that could make a little bit of a difference. But if you're down 3-0, I don't know how much it will matter. So I hope the Celtics find, even with whatever it's going to be, 25% capacity, 5,000 fans, uh, find some energy in that building, uh, find a way to make this series interesting because game two uh, was a little bit discouraging the way they came out flat and Joe Harris hits a million shots and all of a sudden the Celtics are down big. So uh, if they can hang in there at the start, be a little bit more like game one with their defensive intensity, maybe they can make this thing interesting because as much as I don't like the Celtics chances, it is true. The series doesn't start until a home team loses. So Celtics are still sort of, sort of in this until the Nets uh, assert their dominance. And to that point, the TD Garden is known for fans being very lively. How much of of an effect do you think that has on the players themselves? I think it's going to be almost jarring because think about like Celtics fans. I I remember Tristan Thompson when he signed here. He's like, part of the reason I came here is because I want to play in front of these fans and the craziness that goes on. And he's been waiting six months now to get a taste of that. Now they've had, again, 5,000 fans. 2,500, uh, but it's a lot different when that number jumps up. The other thing that's, that, that's different is playoffs. Like the atmosphere, right. the intensity, it just goes to a different level. So uh, I'm intrigued to see if the Celtics can feed off of that. I do think there were games this year where maybe they were a little flat, maybe they could have got a boost from the crowd. I wonder if, you know, seeing all that green, being back home, uh, hearing that support can give them a little bit of a boost. But let's face it again, like it's on the players to go out there and, and play to a higher level than they have at the start of this series. And related to that, if anyone's been following the Celtics, they've heard <laughs> or the series, they heard Kyrie Irving made some comments about Boston and the history that is known mm-hmm. here in Boston of racism. What do you think his intentions were by bringing that up before the play? <sighs> so, so, I mean, so, so first and foremost, anytime you hear something like that, you, you, I know I've, I've heard people say and sort of dismiss it. You can't. Like, you know, I, I'd be interested to know more about what, Kyrie experienced uh he you know he sort of he brought it up but then didn't really expound too much I'd, I'd like to know but what did he experience how did the organization maybe handle it if he brought it to them and you know just how we can stop those instances from happening I it's hard for me because I am from here and I I consider this a very smart a very passionate fan base are there bad eggs in the crowd I think they're you know undeniably and Boston has a reputation, unfortunately, around this. And so um, it, it's discouraging to hear in that regards. I hope and I you know, believe in my heart that the booze you will hear in game three will be strictly related to basketball, that, you know, Kyrie knows it's coming and I'm sure he's not looking forward to hearing it. I mean, when he was here, he never went back to Cleveland because he didn't want to deal with all the headaches that come along with it. I'm sure coming back to Boston, uh, is a little weird. Like he's going to be underneath a spot where he said, I hope my banner's up. I hope my jersey yeah. number's up there and all that. So yeah. I just think, you know, maybe he's going to hear it. He's not going to want to hear it. But this is, this is, this will be strictly basketball, as Kyrie said. Like he made a little bit of a promise, didn't back it up, and which was within his right. He, had, he was an unrestricted free agent, but he did say, hey, if you'll have me back. I'm going to resign here. Didn't. So, so, so ultimately the Celtics fans, I think it'll be a little bit cathartic for them to, to let that out. And I, I hope they do it in the right way. Uh, and we'll see how that plays out. On the floor, Jalen has been out, is out for this mm. series with season ending injury or the season ending surgery. Jason Tatum got poked in the eye in game two, but is expected to be back. Who is the factor that you think plays the, the biggest role in them being able to win being free. Good yeah. So like, I, I would, I wish we could have Jalen for this series. Cause I'd love to see how different it is out there. And, you know, like if that could even the, the playing field a little bit, you know, to me, the X factor always comes back to Rob Williams. I think we saw it in game one, right. goes out there and blocks yeah. nine shots and, you know, it's just everywhere. They, they just had a different energy. Now he was in foul trouble. The last game didn't, didn't assert the same sort of dominance. So uh, they need Rob to be good. But, you know, look, Kemba's got to be good. Kemba's got to be way better than he's been 
at the start of this series. Evan Fournier has got to, you know, channel some of that energy when he was chirping at Kevin Durant on the sideline. I think the whole Celtics team needs a little bit of that of that fire. And so uh, they, Jason Tatum can't win this on his own. He needs to be great for them to have a chance. And so hopefully that eye is feeling better. Uh, but they need their supporting cast to really kind of – everyone needs to contribute, especially on the scoring side, or else it's hard to keep pace. Like the Nets score a billion points a night. And, I, uh, you know, I hear everyone say, like, how do you defend them? You, you can't. They're like, there's two MVPs, well, there's good. Kyrie. They're they're really stinking good. So uh, you've got to kind of just try to trade punches and hang in there. And I think a lot of that comes back to just being better offensively. So uh, Kemba, Evan, all those guys, they got to be good. I'm not big on predictions, but – you did allude to the fact that you think the Nets will take this series. What would you say is going to be the final series run? Like four to three, six games? <laughs> or... you're, you're, you're putting me in a tough spot here, Kwani. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, 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 you know, I've said from the beginning, I, my, my initial series prediction was Nets in five. The problem was right. I, could, I couldn't figure out where the Celtics stole a game. And so, it, I, again, if they had 17,000 fans for game three and the whole Kyrie subplot, I think the Celtics maybe find a way to win that. And then, you know, look, it's 2-1. There's a little bit more interest at that point. I, I can still see that happening, but I think the Celtics really have to put together one of their best games of the year. And I think they need the Nets a little bit to relent. Like, the Nets came out in game two and were like, Joe Harris is going to take this game over. And, and, and I'm not sure – I'm sure that wasn't the plan, but the Celtics gave them that opportunity with the way they lost him in transition. And so uh, I still say – I mean, if, I have, if, you, if, you, if you made me, like, yeah. bet my, 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 my mortgage or, like, whatever on it, I would probably have to say Nets in four just based on the way they've dominated the series to this point. I can see the Celtics stealing a game somewhere, but I honestly can't see it going more than five, unless unless I'm just undervaluing the boost the Celtics will get coming back home. I, I hate to be that way, but you know, Iquani, in the playoffs, talent is king, and yeah. like the the Nets just have so much talent, and I, they're my favorite to come out come out of this whole thing. And I think they're in for a, a, a tough matchup in round two if they get the Bucks. But uh, when you've got two MVPs and a Kyrie going 50, 40, 90, that's just a lot to deal with. If you're a Celtics fan, I think you should still stick it out, watch the mm-hmm. series, especially on NBC Sports Boston for this first round. But Chris, moving forward, mm-hmm. what do you think that Celtics fans should look forward to in the future, next season? So, so I think I think this, and I, I say this all the time, I know there's going to be a lot of overreaction if the Celtics get bounced in the first round, but you still have Jason Tatum, 23 years old, Jalen Brown's 24 Brad Stevens, I promise, is still a good coach, and the the future is very bright, especially, you know, Rob Williams emerging this year and showing what he can do. Uh, If he can stay healthy, you look ahead to next season, the the schedule isn't going to be nearly as daunting where you've been playing every other night and the grind of the year and Kemba not being able to play. I do think there'll be some changes to the roster as well. I think they, they saw this year that just not deep enough to compete with the best teams in the league. And Danny Ainge has to do a better job finding the pieces that make Jalen and Jason the best players they can be. But, like, they still got room to grow. They, I just feel like the Celtics are trending still in a positive direction. As much as we sometimes get caught up in how miserable this season has been, but just because of, the, of all the obstacles they dealt with, with injuries and COVID and putting themselves in this position against a really good team in the first round of the playoffs. But the future is still bright. And I think – what I want to see at the end of this series is just them showing that they can still be on a level near the Nets. And then I'll say to myself, okay, they get Jalen back. They make some tweaks to this roster. The future is still bright. I just think there's still stuff we can pluck from this. That's why I, like, I'm watching these games and I go in with low expectations. And, you know, maybe Rob Williams makes you happy that day. Maybe Evan Fournier yeah. can show you something that says let's, let, let's, let's go and re-sign him and bring him back. So you just got to look for those little pockets. It's, it's been a weird, strange year. And uh, as much as the people that are sitting there saying fire Brad and fire Danny and change this roster and trade Jalen and trade Jason, calm down. Let's bring it down a level. Like, let's not overreact too much to one weird year where none of us have left our basements for 16 months. <laughs> that is a very valid point. Thank you so much, Chris Forsberg. Celtics insider for NBC Sports Boston. As I mentioned, for the first round, make sure you're watching the games on NBC Sports Boston. And good luck to the Celtics. They'll need it.